Hi everybody. Bodger and I are going to read you a nice story, which is going to set all of your work up for next week in literacy. Okay, Bodger? You going to behave? Okay, I'm hoping he's going to be good. He hasn't been great since you guys have been away, but he said he's going to be good today. So you sit there, Bodger, okay? Okay? And the book is called Hansel and Gretel. Can you help me, Bodger? It was a long time ago and a long way away. A boy called Hansel and a girl called Gretel lived with their parents in a cottage by the forest. Times were hard. Wolves stole the sheep. Foxes stole the hen. The potatoes didn't grow. They were nearly starving. And one night, when the children were so hungry that they couldn't sleep, they heard their mother saying, Hudson! Hudson, there's not enough food left for all of us. But what can we do? They heard their father say, Husband, husband, it's quite simple. We must take the children into the forest and leave them to fend for themselves. I can't do that, he said. Well, if we don't, husband, then we'll all die. Gretel began to cry then, and had to put his arms around her. Don't worry, he said. I know what to do. He waited till his parents were asleep, and then he crept outside. The moon was full and bright, and the pebbles on the ground shone like stars. He filled his pockets with them. The next morning they were woken up by their mother shaking them roughly. Get up, get up, you must come with us to chop up the wood. She gave them each a slice of bread that Hansel slipped his into Gretel's pocket and they all set off to get... Roger, stop it. They all set off together. Every now and again, Hansel lingered behind to, stop, to drop a pebble on, the path, pebble on the path. Come on, come on, his father urged, anxious to get it all over and done with. What are you gawping at, stupid boy? His mother asked. I'm just saying goodbye to my little white cat, Hansel said, as he dropped another pebble. That's not a cat, you fool. How many times must I tell you it's the sun shining on the chimney pots? When they arrived in the middle of the forest, the parents told the children to gather twigs and light the fire. And wait here till we come for you. They went off without saying goodbye. The children ate their bread and curled up by the fire. They could hear a sound like a chop, chop, chop of an axe and thought for a long time that it must be their father nearby. But it was only a branch knocking against the pole that their mother had set up to trick them. It grew dark and cold. Their little fire died out. But when the moon came up, there were the pebbles that Hansel had dropped, shining like bright eyes and guiding them back home. When they knocked on the door, their mother opened it. She couldn't believe what she was seeing. Roger, stop it. Husband, husband! The children had come home. She scolded them for staying out so long, but their father's heart rose at the sight of his children. We'll make do on what we have, he told his wife, and she pursed her lips grimly and said, We'll have to see, husband. But bad times came again. The earth was cold and bare. Men and beasts groaned with hunger. One night the children lay awake and heard their mother saying, Husband, husband, something's got to be done tomorrow. We'll take the children to the forest and leave them there. Gretel cried and Hansel put his arms round her and said, Don't worry, Gretel, I'll think of something. When his parents were asleep, he crept downstairs. Outside, the white pebbles gleamed. In the, moon, in the moonlight, but his mother had locked the door and he couldn't get to them. Next morning, they had to get up early. Come on, come on, the children's mother called. We've got to get some wood for our fire. She gave them a much smaller slice of bread than last time. Keep it in your pocket for later, she told them. Bodger. But every now and again, as they walked, Hansel lingered behind and crumbled little pieces of bread onto the ground to guide the way back home. What are you hanging back there for, his mother called. Uh, I'm only looking for the little white dove on the rooftop. It's saying goodbye to me. Stupid boy, there's no white dove, his mother snapped. It's our chimney pot, I keep telling you. They walked and walked until there was no walking left in their feet. Have a rest, their mother told them. Light the fire and sit here until we come back. She and her husband went off without saying goodbye. 
Hatford crumbled all the slice of bread away, so they only had Gretel's piece to share between them. Night was falling, it was growing dark, and their little fire went down. The moon came up, and the children searched for and the children searched for the trail of big breadcrumbs that would lead them back home. But there was nothing left. The birds of the forest had eaten every crumb. Hansel and Gretel built up their fire again and covered themselves over with leaves and tried to shut out the howling and creaking night. When morning came, they set off home again, but the more they walked, the more they got lost. And sometimes it seemed that they passed the same tree eleven times in an hour. They wandered for three nights and three days, and nothing looked right. Nothing looked like the way home, and the trees were high and dark, blocking out the light of day. Follow me, follow me, they heard a voice calling, and they saw a white bird gleaming like the moon among the branches. They ran after it and came to a clearing, and there, in the middle of the cottage, in the middle was a cottage made of gingerbread. They went right up to it, quite sure that they must be dreaming, but it was true. Hansel pulled a piece of brandy snap off the gate and gave Gretel some. Gretel picked two lollipops out of the garden and handed one to Hansel. Mmm, taste the door. It's like strawberries, Hansel said, but Gretel was too busy licking the barley sugar windows. They couldn't stop themselves. They pulled great chunks of sweet and sticky gingerbread out of the wall and stuffed them into their mouth. The more they ate, the more they wanted. They heard a voice coming from inside. Who's that nibbling at my house? It was only a little harvest mouse, they called, and carried on eating. But then the door opened, and out came the oldest woman in the world. They stopped with their hands full and their cheeks bulging and stared. Her skin shivered and crinkled like dry leaves, and her eyes were as red as burning coals. She was a witch on the lookout for children to eat. But she seemed sweet enough at first. Come right in, she cooed, just like the white bird. I've been expecting you. They followed her inside the house and there, sure enough, was a table laid for two with still more food and upstairs two beds, clean white sheets. Hansel and Gretel slept like angels on white clouds that night. But next morning, Gretel woke up to find the witch patting Hansel's rosy cheeks as if they were ripe apples. He'll do nicely, she crooned, when he's fattened up a little bit more. What do you mean, said Gretel, beginning to start feeling a little afraid. You've had your feast now. Now I want mine, snapped the witch, all her cooey sweetness gone. She yanked Hansel out of bed and pushed him into a cage in the yard before he had time to blink the sleep out of his eyes. Now get him fed, she yapped at Gretel. I like nice fat boys for my supper. From then on, all the best food went to Hansel. Gretel got bread crust and bits of bacon rind and stale cake. But she didn't mind about that. She was worried about poor Hansel. He wasn't enjoying his food much either. Every day the witch told him to put his finger out of the cage so that she could squeeze it and see how much fatter he was getting. He played a little trick on her. He stuck a bit of chicken bone out of the cage instead of his finger. And the witch's eyesight was so bad that she couldn't tell the difference. But she, de but she decided at last that she was, she was too hungry to wait any longer. Today's the day, she said, smacking her lips. Get a fire going, Gretel. I've a tasty stew to cook. She filled a cauldron with water and started chopping up vegetables. And as she was chopping, she cackled a happy song to herself. Carrots and onions in the pot and a little fat boy when it's good and hot. She threw in the vegetables one by one. Gretel began to cry. Gretel, the witch called. I'm going to make some bread to mop up the gravy. Get the bread tray out of the oven for me. Nothing tastes better than a little boy stew with slices of little girl bread to chew. She sang in her crackly voice. Hurry up, Gretel, the bread tray. Gretel knew what the witch was going to do. She wasn't going to break bread at all, break, bake bread at all. She was going to bake her. She went to the oven with her heart in her boot. I can't turn the handle, it's too stiff, she cried. What a useless child you are. Bang it with the poker like this. And the witch did it for her. 
But I can't see the bread tray, it's too dark in the oven, Gretel cried. What a stupid girl you are. Bend down and reach right in, like this. And the witch bent down to do it for her. And quick as a flash, Gretel shut her into the oven and slammed the door. And that was the end of the witch. Burnt to a cinder. Then Gretel ran to Hansel's cage and let him out. They loaded up their pockets with all the pearls and diamonds that the witch had in her cupboards and ran and ran from the gingerbread house, ran and ran from the dark forest and the tall trees, and at last they came to their own cottage with the white chimney. There was their father, grown old and ill with worrying about them. His wife was dead and gone. He wept when he saw the children. I thought I would never see you again, he said. Hansel and Gretel gave him the treasure which they had taken from the witch's house, and they all lived in a great happiness and were never hungry again. What are you doing, Bodger? Are you okay? Did you like the story? I'm going to ask Bodger. Did you like it? A lot? Did you listen? You said you listened. Bodger, don't do that again. We've, we've stopped doing that, so make sure you are being polite, okay? Anyway, would you like to say hello? Pardon? Yeah? Okay. You want to say hello to everybody? I know, he really, really misses you. Bodger, I didn't say dance, did I? I just said, Bodger, calm down. Bodger, you don't need to say, they don't want to see you dance. Bodger, say bye. Bye-bye.